Okay, we have some breaking news right now. This is Steve Bannon just leaving the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. after his first appearance after he was charged with two criminal counts of contempt of court. Uh, we saw him a couple of hours ago going into this uh, courthouse, and now he is leaving. We'll see if he has anything more to say to reporters here. Yeah, Bannon here, um, prosecutors didn't seek to uh, detain him before his trial that, of course, we know is coming. No bond was set, and uh, his official arraignment is next week. But we heard from him this morning where he says that this, uh, speaking about the proceedings today, was noise, as he called it. Of course, Bannon revels in this uh, attention. Let's see what we uh, hear from Steve Bannon. Where's David? Right here. <laughs> Listen, or, or, ordinarily, we don't like to comment on the case, but I have the uh, obligation to respond to something that Attorney General Garland wrote. Attorney General Garland wrote, he's promised Justice Department employees would show the American people by word and deed, Justice Department adheres to the rule of law, follows the facts in the law, and pursues equal justice under the law. I assume here you can take off your masks? Yes. Do it. Okay. It's a free country. There is nothing about this case that reflects the pursuit of the equal justice under the law. This thing was a scam from the beginning. The committee, the committee, the committee that was convened here was convened exclusively of people who have made prejudgments and announced them publicly. The chair of the committee sued President Trump personally and before he was even appointed to his position, determined and put in writing that President Trump was responsible for the events of January 6th. This is not an investigative committee. There's nothing for him to investigate when he's made a prejudgment. We have other members of the committee who announced their prejudgments well in advance. It's not equal justice under the law, Mr. Garland, to charge a matter like this criminally. The holder of the privilege in this case, executive privilege, invoked the privilege. Mr. Bannon is a layperson. When the privilege has been invoked by the purported holder of privilege, he has no choice but to withhold the documents. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Um, Mr. Bannon had acted as his lawyer counseled him to do by not appearing and by not and by not turning over documents in this case. He didn't refuse to comply. He made quite clear that if a court ordered him to comply, he would do that. But he had an obligation to honor the privilege that was invoked. And in terms of prosecuting this criminally, it violates settled Department of Justice policy that's binding on the executive branch. It is outrageous that a criminal charge was brought in this case. It is a misdemeanor, but it's being treated as if it were a capital case. Um, Mr. Bannon takes this very seriously. It's outrageous what the government did. The principles of equal justice under law that Mr. Attorney General Garland speaks about are vitally important to all of us. And we all lose as Americans when they're selectively used and when we violate that principle. You see these signs right here and the guys over here saying insurrection and all that? That's what this country's about. It's freedom of speech. They got their opinions. We have our opinions. Okay? Hang on. They have their opinions. I'm telling you right now. This is going to be the misdemeanor from hell for Merrick Garland, Nancy Pelosi, and Joe Biden. Joe Biden ordered Merrick Garland to prosecute me from the White House lawn when he got off Marine One. And we're going to do, we're going to go on the offense. We're tired of playing defense. We're going to go on the offense on this and stand by. They, by the way, by the way, by the way, you should understand Nancy Pelosi took, is taking on Donald Trump and Steve Bannon. She ought to ask Hillary Clinton how that turned out for them, okay? We're going on the offense. Stand by. You should, you should be outraged if he ever faced that possibility as an American. There is nothing criminal about any conduct that occurred in this case. And when we respond to Merrick Garland, we say, apply the, apply the law equally. They don't have, who else did they prosecute for invoking executive privilege in a criminal prosecution? Read the Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel letters. It's unconstitutional according to their, according to their own opinions from some real luminaries, including, by the way, read the Office of Legal Counsel opinion by Eric Holder for the Obama administration, the Fast and the Furious case. This is unheard of to force a, a, a person to uh, violate the invocation of executive privilege. Uh, by the way, I mean, the court, of course, hasn't ruled yet in President Trump's case, in Trump versus Thompson, on whether executive privilege applies. But even beyond that, the Office of Legal Counsel Opinions make clear that it applies to discussions with former government officials, and that makes sense. It makes sense because we often see former officials kept in the loop. 
that the president needs to consult with. And whatever you happen to think the president, President Trump, talked about at the time, that's what executive privilege exists for, so that people can speak freely with the president, uh, talk about strategy members and matters, and talk about national security and other important matters. Uh, by the way, by the way, by the way, not just Trump people and not just conservatives. Every progressive and every liberal in this country that, that likes freedom of speech and liberty, okay, should be fighting for this case. That's why I'm here today. For everybody, I'm never going to back down. And they, they, they took on the wrong guy this time, okay? They took on the wrong guys. And then cite the privilege question by question. Why do you because, because he was instructed by his attorney not to show up in Congress. A lay person has to, follow his, attorney's, uh, has to follow his attorney's advice, in my view at least. When he's faced with a subpoena, he doesn't know anything about legal process otherwise. He relies on a lawyer, and the lawyer gave the advice. And, I must say, relies on the Office of Legal Counsel Opinions, which very clearly say that he need not so show up. Did he get bad advice or what? No, no, I don't the think president it, asserted the, executive privilege. There's no other out. choice. Once the privilege is invoked, what would the choice be? Show up and testify. And by the way, they asked to have members, if he were to testify, to have those people invoking the privilege, a representative of the person invoking the privilege, present, just to be able to monitor it and make an objection if a privilege matter came up. They refused to allow that. On, on by, by the way, by the way, if the administrative state wants to take me on, bring it. Because we're here to fight this, and we're going to go on offense. And you stand by. You see how we're going to go on offense, okay? Nancy Pelosi, Merrick Garland, Joe Biden, the whole, the whole, all of them. What do you okay? mean? What do you mean by offense is we're going to challenge this affirmatively. We're going to fight to defend his rights and to defend your rights also. Your rights. Quite frankly, I represented the American Civil Liberties Union for more than 20 years and all the litigation they had in Alabama. This is an issue that the American Civil Liberties Union ought to be on our side with. Okay, we got to go. Let's bounce. All right, we got to go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, you heard the remarks there from uh, Steve Bannon after this first appearance, also from his attorney, David Schoen. Uh, Steve Bannon calling this, uh, he says it's going to be the misdemeanor from hell, referencing Attorney General Merrick Garland, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, President Biden even squeezed in a Hillary Clinton reference there as well. So clearly uh, the man versus the administration narrative is the one he wants to follow. Let's bring in now Evan Perez. He's outside the uh, courthouse. Ryan Nobles on Capitol Hill, also with the senior legal analyst Ellie Honig uh, on set. Um, Evan, let's start with you. Uh, tell us what happened inside that, that courtroom. Yeah, Victor, you know, that was a, a name check of all of the, the greatest hits. Uh, if you are Steve Bannon and, you know, you have a podcast and you need to fundraise, right? And so that's one of the things you heard from him just now. In court, he was uh, obviously a lot different. Uh, he answered respectfully uh, to the judge uh, when the judge uh, advised him of, of his rights. Uh, the judge uh, scheduled his arraignment for later this week before the trial judge, the tr judge who's actually going to hear this case. And then he was released uh, on his own. Uh, it, it, they took away, took away his passport, they said, um, but he is uh, free to go and, and has to abide by certain restrictions while he's out. But look, uh, as you can tell, from uh, that, uh, that little press availability just now. This is not a normal case. This is not going to be a, a normal case by any stretch of imagination. Not many defendants show up to the FBI to turn themselves in with a live stream crew behind them. Uh, he is uh, here with his own production crew. They're about to walk out just a few yards away uh, to some SUVs uh, to go back to his, uh, to, to his home where he does his podcast from. And you can tell also that he says, you know, this is not going to be an easy case for the Justice Department. And, you know, I think that's one of the indications and one of the reasons why, you know, despite the frustration from a lot of people, the, the, the Justice Department took some time. The Attorney General and the U.S. Attorney here in Washington took their time in considering this referral from uh, the House before they made a decision on Friday to, to bring this criminal case, right? As Bannon has pointed out, there's decades of Justice Department's uh, uh, internal guidance, legal guidance, that he believes supports his idea that he didn't have to show up. He could rely on the former president's claim that he is protected by executive privilege. Some of that is going to have to be worked out uh, before the court. Allison, Ellie, Victor? Yeah, th thank you. Uh, Evan, Ellie, what about that? Because obviously it was very interesting to hear Evan say that he was very different inside the court, that Steve Bannon was respectful to the judge inside, and then he comes out, and there's always that measure of sort of Bannon bluster and martyrdom that he leans into. Um, but what about his argument that the executive privilege uh, uh, 
issue hasn't been resolved yet. Yeah, Allison, so first of all, you're right. That was a show. Let the political martyrdom begin. The problem with what he just did, and the reasons why smart lawyers will tell you don't say anything, is he sort of contradicted himself because he said two things. He said, the reason I defied this subpoena is because it's a political witch hunt, Pelosi and all the other names he dropped, and I'm not going to allow that to happen. Also, I have this executive privilege issue. So which one is it? What's your reason? What's your defense? They, they don't go well together. He's, his lawyer was mischaracterizing these DOJ memos to, a, to an extent. There is a DOJ memo which says it's possible that executive privilege can apply beyond the executive branch in certain narrow circumstances that I don't think are relevant here. Also, this is the big question for Bannon. How is he going to claim executive privilege on conversations he had with other people not in the executive branch, with Rudy Giuliani? with this lawyer, John Eastman. He's going to have a major problem. And this gets back to one of the big problems with Steve Bannon uh, strategically. He has put up a blanket stop sign. If he had said, I agree to this and I fight that, it would have been a much harder case to prosecute.